What's up, y'all? Josh Stops here. Welcome to the next episode of the Torchbearer Pod. Before we get started, though, I want to quickly introduce you guys to some of my friends, and then we got to jump into the news because it's definitely been another crazy week in the life of the NFL. So what's up, guys? How y'all doing? Hey, man. We're doing great. I'm doing better than I deserve. I guess I'll start. Uh, my name is Thomas Edwards. I'm a former teammate of Josh Dobbs and roommate in college at the University of Tennessee. I'm now a singer, songwriter, artist for country music here in Nashville, Tennessee. So, Hey, everybody. My name is Beach Galloway. I used to work in the athletic department at the University of Tennessee in the broadcasting department, and I started my own production company here about a year ago, and uh, I've known Josh and Trey and Thomas since I was in school. What's up, y'all? This is Trey Smith, uh, playing for the Kansas City Chiefs currently as an offensive lineman. Uh, I know Beach, Dobbs, and Thomas from the University of Tennessee. Dobbs actually recruited me when I was in high school, one of the main reasons I ended up coming to Tennessee. And Thomas and I played O-line together for, what was it, two years, Tom? So, yeah. welcome to the show, guys. Super Bowl right. champs, Trey Smith. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know you wanted to say it. All right, so Super Bowl champ you. last year. Super Bowl champ. Super Bowl champ. Let's go. Yeah, we got, well, our uh, our Super Bowl champ is on a bye week this week. So, his week yes, has sir. definitely been different than yours, Dobbs. Dobbs, tell us Ooh. about this week and how it was a little bit different than last week. So, this week we played at home. Um, with for the Minnesota Vikings, played versus the Saints. This week was a little bit different than last week because last week, as we all know, we played on the road at Atlanta. The biggest difference between last week and this week was that I did actually get to practice with the team leading up to the game. So got a full week of preparation. You know, um, how the week usually works out for me is Monday, Tuesday are, you know, watching the last game and also getting your body ready for the week. Wednesday, you dive into the first and second down game plan, attacking the upcoming opponents. The last week was the Saints. Um, we have a walkthrough on Wednesday, practice on Thursday, as and it starts getting a little more situational as we jump into like third down ball. Friday is Fast Friday, where we do red zone, uh, put the ton the finishing touches on you know the third down plan and recap the first and second down plan. And then Saturday you have another walkthrough, and then Sunday you play. So as you can see, you know, going from a week without getting that prep to then a week getting those reps, you know, with the guys that you're going to be out there on game day, allow for it to be um, a little bit more seamless on game day to go out and, and compete and play at a high level. So it's great to get another uh, team dub, man. First game in Minnesota, y'all, I will say, the U.S. Bank Stadium is electric. Electric, like, man. Electric, yeah, dude. Always. That Vikings chant, man. It's yeah. that. Should, phew, that's sin. the skull so chant cool. is something different, yeah. man. They start playing the drums. Everyone in unison hits it. It's wild, man. You know the Chiefs. We have our arrowhead chop, but you know the skull chant. That was dope. First time we played there, I mean, it was amazing. But Dobbs, you looked really comfortable in that game. Obviously, you talked a little bit about getting those reps in practice, building a little bit of t chemistry and camaraderie. But I thought one of the funniest moments I saw is when you hopped off the elevator and you're asking the guy, like, the locker room's this way, right? <laughs> like, that, that to me is – that was one of the funniest moments. That's actually I what did. you were asking him? Was that actually what Literally, you were asking Literally, yeah. So, like, the, that's, what I, that's what I think people don't know. They always ask, like, what is the hardest part going from team to team? And at, at a certain point, it becomes less about – the offense and the football side, it comes just more about the logistics. Like <laughs> you want to stay in your routine, but you're going to the stadium for the first time and you don't know what the traffic patterns are going to be. So I had to leave uh, my apartment like 30 minutes earlier than usual yeah. to make sure I didn't get stuck in any traffic. And then when I got to the stadium, people were directing me where to park how to get in the stadium, which door to go through. Then when I finally got on the elevator, I was like, okay, when I get off the elevator, where's the locker room? Is it left, right? He goes, so that's when the door opened. Of course, the cameras were sitting right there. Um, and it was like, yeah, you know, you just go, you go straight ahead right there, right through those doors. Locker on the left. I appreciate you, my man. Thanks for uh, helping me out on this yeah, beautiful Sunday. Shout out to Minnesota. the staff at U.S. Bank Stadium. I will say the amount of uh, mental energy spent on just making sure you call the play right and then like pre-snap of just making sure everyone's lined up who you're motioning where you're looking <laughs> making sure you're in the right play just on offense like the amount of mental energy that's spent when you don't get the reps so when you do get the reps are night and day like true you, you it's like playing it's like playing with uh one one hand tied behind your back because you spend 30 seconds of the 40 second play clock just trying to figure out what you're doing on offense and then you spend like the last five seconds 
trying to snap the ball and then catch the ball and look at the defense. Whereas like, when you get the reps, man, like everything's just second nature. And so um, now you're looking at the defense, seeing what looks they're going to be in, um, and just able to anticipate the game as it comes. Last week we talked about your conversations and your earpiece with Coach O'Connell. What Were they similar this week? Or were you a little bit more dialed in to what the plays were? Yeah, like they, they weren't – it wasn't uh, as much dialogue um, in my headset. Again, like the headset cuts out at 15. So there were – you know, there was a couple times that we were trying to get in the right play and the headset's counting down. But the amount of communication was less, right? Like because I got the reps – I knew the plays at a better comfort level. We were, me and uh, KOC were able to talk throughout the week about the plays and how we were trying to attack it. Whereas the week before, it was just, this is the play, like just get the ball snapped and then figure it out. So the amount of communication was significantly less. We didn't have to break out the whiteboard on the sideline or anything. It was smooth. It was smooth sailing. So it was fun. Like, I really felt really comfortable out there. Like, obviously, we had a really good first half. Um, we left some meat on the bone in the second half offensively, but the defense like picked up the slack, had our back, and like guys were making plays across the field, and the stadium was rocking. Like it was, it was one of the most fun times I've had playing football up until this point in my career. Like it was rocking. It was really that fun. fires me up, dude. Dobbs, we've all seen the social media clips now of your scramble. Walk us through that play, and just to have the presence of mind to know where guys are turned against your body. What what was going through your head? So the scramble is third and six, I believe, is a big point of the game where we were up seven and you can kick a field goal, go up 10 or you score, you go up 14. So that's a huge momentum shift. Um, we called a play we practiced all week. I got my eyes in the right spot. Uh, they ended up playing too high coverage, taking away the front of the end line, the back of the end line. But our whole line, like they played so good all day uh, where they gave me time to be able to literally go from one to two to then the back end line three, to the second back end line four, to look at the back five. It was all matched up, but just the amount of time I had to sit back there and process and just click through my reads. And then by just watching the effort on their play, just to create holes for me to be able to backdoor it, spin out the backside, um, and then push for the goal line. And then I got on uh, Alante uh, after the game. Uh, shout out Alante Taylor for the <laughs> for the ball on ball crime at, at, the, fr at the front pylon. Um, so I'm sure like whenever we play the Saints again, Alante will be ready for that move. So I'll have to figure out something else to get him on his heels because I was able to get him on his heels and then make it a foot race to the front pylon. And that was lit. Like in the stadium, they, um, they have like snow that falls from the roof, like when you run out. And I think on a couple of like the touchdowns and everything. So it's like a little wintry wonderland inside in the indoor <laughs> dome. So it was, it was crazy. It was crazy. What's going through your head? Like, why are you jumping right there? <laughs> so the reason I jump at the end zone is it's become a reflex because when I was in school, shout out Coach Sheridan, Nick Sheridan, who was my QB coach at Tennessee. He's now their role, and he, he uh, coaches at Washington, the Huskies, out on the West Coast. Every single Friday uh, before our game, we would just watch a reel of all the touchdowns in the NFL. And so that was when Golden Tate played for Detroit, and he was, like, racking up touchdowns every single week. And he would do, like, a bicycle jump on the goal line. And since then, it's just become just, like, part of my thing. Where I get to the goal line, I just feel – especially when you're running there, I just feel the urge to do something. And so, yeah, I just – You just get a little Super jumping Mario since, jump in there. Dude. Yeah, I've been jumping <laughs> since college. And it's, it's just stuck. Like, I love it. And then a lot of times, like, people dive. Like, people always go low at the goal line. So – I mean, I have gotten flipped a couple times, you know, jumping at the end zone. But, hey, it's better get flipped and have someone, you know, go low and take your knees out. So, yeah. shoot. It works. Cerebral. If it ain't broke, don't, fix, don't it. fix it. <laughs> don't fix it. I felt like that game in Minnesota was a big one for the Vols. I got a shout out my former roommate, Ty Chandler. I thought Ty balled out, man. Tell me a little bit about balled. the plays that he had today. Man, he came in and did a tremendous job. Like, Alex – I think he went down in the third quarter. Uh, but Ty came in first quarter, second quarter, had his first career rushing touchdown. Yes, sir. Snap. We got him in the end zone. Um, so that was exciting uh, for him to get in there. And then, like, he had one taken off the board. So we had a questionable holding call later in the game. 
um, on a short yardage play where Ty got the edge and hit it and scored another touchdown. And then he had like big runs all day. Like we were able to kind of play ball control in the fourth quarter. And Ty was a big part of that. You know, we we're handing out, handing him off the ball inside the tackles on the edge. He's making guys miss. He's fighting for extra yards. He's catching passes in the screen game. Like he did a really good job. So I think like his role is going to grow. Um, Trey, as you know, like that's the nature of the NFL. Like as the weeks progress, man, like new guys have to step up into bigger roles and to see how he stepped into the role on Sunday. I know he's just going to continue to do that moving forward as he starts getting more touches and continues to make plays for us. So I'm excited for the young Ty Chandlers. Dobbs, there uh, has been a insane amount of social media coverage around you this week. Tell us about what your reaction was when the NFL changed their Twitter bio. Bro, that was hilarious. So when the NFL, I didn't see it till after the game. I saw the NFL change their Twitter bio after the game. Obviously, you know, uh, I think it was like Taylor Swift before. So uh, Trey, <laughs> Trav, Trav, sorry for sorry for the switch. Um, but no, it was cool. It was like it's fun just seeing. It's still up there. Yeah. Still up, dude. It's Tuesday. It's almost it's Tuesday, crazy. man. That's it's crazy. crazy. Like it's been. I think like the coolest thing that I saw um, was just how people are just you know all the cutaways like during the game they have like me like riding a rocket or something like after a touchdown and stuff it's just it's just it's it's really cool to see um how like the NFL media is having fun with um all the stuff it's it's all so funny like i i i crack up um i crack up at it all like i can laugh at myself so um I'm not tripping. So I, I, I do enjoy that people are having fun with it. Trey, you got a you had a bye week this week, man. What'd you do? What's some of the things you did this week? I went to Charlotte on Wednesday and visited my buddy Beach over here. Oh. So we just sort of went around town, went to a uh, Hornets game. Uh, it was a good time. Charlotte's a great city. Had a great vibe going to it. So when we came back from that. you like Cabo or something for your buddy. Nah, what man. You, you know, I'm low-key, Dobbs. I, I'm, I don't need anything. Just wanted to hang out with some friends. Um, other than that, tried out the new Call of Duty. Uh, pretty trash. Just going to throw it out there. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, man, we went to uh, Columbia, uh, watched the Vols play, didn't get the results we wanted, uh, but it was a good road trip with some friends. Yeah. I, I have a question about the about the environment at Columbia. Yeah. How, what, if you had to rank it like Neyland's 10, okay, mm-hmm. where does Arrowhead Stadium's nine and a half, where does at Columbia game rank in this in this scale? You're gonna get me in trouble. Uh, I'm gonna give Columbia a solid six and a half, and that's probably I'm all sorry. I'm gonna give it. Um, Dobbs, what's a cool school you visited in terms of like stadium atmosphere and game day atmosphere? Well, the best one that's non traditional for the ones that we know was Oregon. Or I believe that there. Austin Stadium. Bro, that place rocks. We played there my freshman year. Um, I think we were, and Tom, correct me, we were 2-0 going into the game. We were unranked. Yeah, They were ranked five in the nation. Like, they had Marcus Mariota, DeAnthony Thomas. They had a first-round DN, like, studs all across yeah. the board. We get yeah, out there. They were unreal. And it was, a, it was a noon game, and Coach Jones didn't let us change our body clocks to the West Coast. <laughs> so we flew out there on a Friday – and he was like, we're going to stay on East Coast, like, time zone body clock. So it's a noon game in Oregon. So it's like a 3 o'clock game for us on the East Coast. But he made us wake up at, like, 6 a.m. Because that's 9 a.m. So we woke up at 6 a.m. For, for a noon game. So you're up, like, super early. It's pitch black outside doing a walkthrough, like, in the parking lot. We go uh, we go to the stadium. Boom, I wasn't playing. Um we uh I think we started the game, we went down, we scored, we scored, and we're like, all right, we're about to upset Oregon, you know, on the road. It's gonna be crazy. <laughs> There's like a thousand balls fans there. And then they went on to score 59 points unanswered. The <laughs> fastest I've ever oh, seen. That team was team so run. fast, dude. They were I, it was, was incredible. Like watching DeAnthony Thomas like in person was the most incredible thing ever. Like he was so fast and shifty. You play with him on NCAA and then you see him out oh, there. Yeah. It was You guys have been moving around a lot. You know, Trey went to Germany. You know, he's back in the States now. He went to Charlotte this week, bouncing around. Dubs, we we know you've been flying around. So I think uh, it's time that we have a state capitals 
trivia session here. I will name the state, and then the first person to respond with the capital wins. So, I mean, let's just start out with this one. Tennessee. Nashville. Nashville. You, like, I, I know. Come on, Dobbs. I mean, there's got to be some that's, latency that's or something. That's easy. There's gotta be, I, mean, yeah. I think his internet connection is a little faster than mine. All right, all right. Let's get a little tougher here. Okay. Delaware. Oh, Biden. Uh. <laughs> 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 what, what, I mean, uh, Dover? Yeah, nailed it. Oh, my gosh. Huge. That's a huge one. Huge one. Huge one. Huge Congrats, one. Trey. Great, what, great win there, Trey. All right, next one is uh, Florida. Game. Nah. It's a it is big football um, school there. I mean, there's a lot of big football uh, schools in Florida, Hazzy. man. There you go. Yeah, Put me on the board, baby. Minnesota. St. Paul. Oh, yeah. You should have gotten that one. <laughs> You should have well, gotten you say it so fast? It's crazy. Dude, I just know my capitals. Come on. I wish you would have just said – I wish you, one of you would have just said Minneapolis. I that almost said me. It, but – All right, we'll do this last one. I think this is one of the hardest ones. I get this one wrong often. Washington State. Like the state of Washington? Yeah. There's so one that we want to say. Seattle. Can we get yeah, the does, first letter possibly? Tacoma. No. Is it not? It's not Tacoma? No. Starts with an O. Olympia? Olympia. Correct. I mean, we have the geography whiz on here. Yeah, Trey, you know know your geography, man. Yeah, man. We'll see if you know these. My next, uh, this is the last thing I'll do, and then you you don't have to listen to me anymore. Uh, (laughs) I call this the Thomas's hypothetical situation station. Um. I've tailored some hypothetical situations that I want either of you to answer. I'll, I'll let you know who, who can answer each one of these. Um, so, Trey, you wake up one day and you realize you can stop time. What's the first thing you're doing when you're stopping time? Wow. What a, what a question, Tom. Uh, stopping time. First thing I'm going to do, probably going to one of my favorite restaurants. Oh. <laughs> and I'm just going to go off. I'm, I'm going to have a sandwich. I'm going to have free access to what I need. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna just chow down, but you know, you know, that's, most, I mean, that's that see, I like that answer. O line answer I've ever heard. I like, I, I like what that an opportunity. Answer. Another like O line ism right here too, and even better. Instead of just stopping time in that situation, I'm gonna eat at a restaurant <laughs> and stop time so people won't watch me eat. Oh, that, that is go. a huge pet peeve. If you're a big guy, you're sitting down <laughs> eating food. You're just like, damn fat. I slow down. The food's not <laughs> yeah. going anywhere. We're like, people oh, do you're that. a big guy. You can eat. Dude, the right. worst one, I was in Knoxville one time. They're like, big and don't eat up the whole restaurant. Like, come oh, on, wow. man. It's like, so I would stop time and enjoy my meal finally. Um, Trey, I got one for you. So the NFL, like we know, changed their Twitter bio to and Dobbs We Trust from and Taylor We Trust. You've had a chance to be around both of them. Who do you like more? Wow. <laughs> Be it that I've known Dobbs for a lot of years, I'd have to say Dobbs. I just met Taylor one time. No, the the only time I met her, uh, she was super sweet, super personable. Um, Nothing but a great experience, obviously. But I'm going to give this one to Dobbs. I've known him longer. Hell, he's one of the reasons I went to Tennessee. So, Dobbs, you take the cake on that one, brother. Appreciate that, Trey. If I was you, though, I might say Taylor. (laughs) You should have been at her concert in Argentina for the off season for the off week with Trav. So oh. maybe 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 next year you get you get you get to go on that trip. Maybe next time. <laughs> yeah. Trey, let's get to what we really talked about. What we really want to know, all right? <laughs> Super Bowl rematch coming up this week. Chiefs versus Eagles. What's kind of the hype and vibes in the building about having a little rematch versus shoot one of the best teams in the NFC? Yeah, you know, obviously it was a Super Bowl matchup from last season. Uh, Have a ton of respect for the Eagles organization, their players, coaches, everyone in that building. I mean, they did an outstanding job last season. This year they got there, and they're doing an outstanding job this year as well. Uh, It's going to be a tremendous challenge uh, for our team. Obviously up front, they have really uh, special players uh, that we have to match up to. And, you know, at the end of the day, we just have to do our job. But it's definitely going to be a highly anticipated game, given that it was a rematch from the Super Bowl last year. But... Once again, we just have to come out, do our thing. But hats off to the Eagles as an organization. Have nothing but respect for their players and their team. Where Where's the game going to be at? 
In Arrowhead, baby. Monday night football. He's in Arrowhead. Ooh. Yes, sir. I was about to say, have you have you ever gone to a game in Philly? Uh, we actually played in Philly uh my rookie year. I think it was like my game four. It was pretty early in the season too. But Philly is a crazy I love that atmosphere. That place is nuts. I love Philly, man. The fans there, they're rabid, man. They love ball. They want to see great ball at the end of the day. And you know, the Eagles have been putting a great product on the field. So yeah. it's a great environment to play at. We played we played uh Philly in a preseason my second year, and we beat them in a preseason game and Leaving the stadium, their fans were throwing stuff at our bus and flipping it <laughs> yeah, That's, man. That's Philly, oh, yeah. bro. Have you guys ever seen the TikTok this... of the, like, 13-year-old Eagles fans doing the trivia, and then, like, a Vikings fan walks by, and maybe they're 10 years old, and right when the Vikings fan walks by, they just go, Q! And they go back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's man. Great. And Dobbs, last time that we talked, you were living out of the hotel, you had no car, and you only had one bag of clothes. Have you got more clothes? Do you have your car? Where are you now? Yeah, so a week ago to now, my life looks a little bit different. So I did find a spot that's not the uh, team hotel right next to the complex. So we have been able to venture off of uh, the Minnesota, Minnesota Vikings territory where our complex is. So I got an apartment um, about 10 minutes from the complex, 10 minutes to the stadium downtown. So nice, centrally located. My car came in nice. two days before the game. So got a little transportation, can go, you know, get some nice dinners. Um, as I said last week, big shout outs to Jocelyn. She she packed up a couple bags in the car. So when the car arrived, I had, you know, some more clothing, some winter gear as it starts to get a little colder up here. Had some more entertainment. I got, as you can see, my setup is starting to come together as well. So we are starting to get some semblance of life. I did um, I did an uh, interview with... Uh, Scott Van Pelt, and he asked, like, how much of your stuff do you actually have? And I told him, I'll tell you guys, I probably have, like, 5% of, you know, <laughs> everything that I own with me. And that's probably going to be the case for the rest of the season. Everything's just going to go into storage. We're going to just rough it for a little bit. And then after the season, we'll get our bearings. I'll get my feet under me, and we'll get back to a, a normal life, per se. Who knows what's going to happen then? Dobbs, I got to ask. How are the parents feeling? Obviously, I knew their baby boy is special, but with all the success you're having, obviously having to travel back to and fro from all these different places, what have they been saying pretty much every week? You're calling them for the game, after the game? Like, what are they pretty much feeling right now? So my parents, as you guys know, are extremely supportive. My yep. only child. So they still have not missed a game. They've been at every single game throughout <laughs> the year. They are locked in, like, you know, in the hotel or wherever. They, they are – wherever we're playing, they're going to be there. You know, big shout out to everyone supporting the Astro Dobbs merch because my dad has been put to work. <laughs> After the game, um, I was like, so there, my parents are flying out to Arizona to pack up the house out there. So I was like, are you guys are flying out to Arizona today? But I was like, no, we're flying back to Atlanta. I got orders to get out. He has so many orders. <laughs> That's awesome. And he has to fly from Minnesota back to Atlanta. Um, so, yeah, no, they're so they're awesome. Like, I, as you know, they're so supportive. They're um, helping out any way they can. They're just enjoying the ride as much as we all are. So um, I love them. They're awesome. So I appreciate. Do we it. have Do we have yes, any sir. new merch coming out anytime soon? We do. We are working on work on some some astronaut merch. It's it's going to drop soon. So be sure to keep your eyes peeled. A lot of people in the comments have been asking why the podcast is called the Torch Bears. Dobbs, Trey, you guys care to fill them in? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the Torch Bear Award is a prestigious award given out to 10 to 12 students on UTK's campus every single year. And what it means is, like, if, we, if you visit uh, the University of Tennessee at the center of campus, there's a Torch Bear. And, you know, being a Torch Bear just talks about, you know, being a light in your community, whether you're a student, whether you're an athlete. Uh, whether you're a musician, no matter what your identity is, just being that constant positive light and carrying the torch of what it means to be a leader in your community. So uh, during my time at Tennessee, I was blessed to receive the Torch Bear Award, uh, was the first football player to receive that award in a while. And then, you know, after obviously recruiting Trey to come to Tennessee, Trey <laughs> followed in the footsteps and also was a Torch Bear Award recipient. And so this award, you're chosen anonymously. There's no application for the award. 
you're chosen by your peers, by your teachers, by your coaches, by your teammates, the people that see you every single day and see the type of person that you are not only in your craft, but also in the community. So it's a true honor to receive the award. And as, of course, you know, me and Trey venture into our professional lives, we want to continue being torch bearers um, in our own realms, whether it's on the field, off the field, whatever our interests are, man, we always want to serve as that positive, consistent light in our communities that we are able to affect. Holy smokes, what an answer that was, dude. Come I, on. I, I want to add one thing that Dobbs didn't, didn't touch on, though. It's also the highest academic honor that anyone yeah. can receive at the University of Tennessee, and we are lucky enough to have two on our podcast. And as you guys know, new episodes are coming out every Thursday. Thank you so much for the support, and we'll catch you guys next week.